Hi guys. Unbelievably, we have a gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise in this sleazy motel room in Seattle, Washington, where it is bright blue skies in Seattle, Washington for another 20 minutes. But good God, I could be in Miami, Florida on the opposite side of this country. So I will not complain, but today is Thursday morning. October 6, 2016. So Thursday is when I bring you my depressed collapsitarian rant. So this is your old depressed collapsitarian doomsday tourist coming at you with an article from Esquire magazine. Actually, this article is more than a year old. I think I remember touching upon it a year ago, but this article right here, perhaps the single best depressed collapsitarian article I have ever found in the mainstream media. Hats off to Esquire magazine. Esquire magazine, those doomsday prophets at Esquire magazine. When the end of human civilization is your day job, among many climate scientists gloom has set in, things are worse than we think, but they can't really talk about it, meaning publicly. Uh, and it, guys, this article was written more than a year ago, okay, before we even got into this, to this meltdown in 2016. I'm going to put the link to this article here in the, in the description, and I recommend you read every single word of this article and send it to everyone you know. I do, in fact, recommend you shut me up right now and go read it yourself. But if you want to have some doomsday tourist depressed collapsitarian read it for you, good God, I mean, this is a long, long, well-researched, excellent piece by a fellow named John Richardson. Good for you, John Richardson and um, Esquire Magazine. And so what this article starts off with is talking about my number one most popular climate article. I think I've got like 40 or 50,000 hits on this climatologist named Jason Box, who made history, I think two years ago, with his We Are Fucked tweet where he just cut to the chase, this climatologist, we are fucked, and I reported on that, but here is actually that, the, the entire uh, quote around, uh, around it, um, get, getting to the we are fucked. Okay, <clears throat> our, this is quoting Mr. Box, our first observations of elevated methane levels about 10 times higher than in background seawater are documented. We discovered over 100 new methane seeps sites. This was, you know, several years ago. The weather gods are still on our side as we steam through a now ice-free Laptev Sea in, uh, I guess, somewhere in the Arctic Ocean. And then his famous quote, if even, if even a small fraction of Arctic seafloor carbon is released into the atmosphere, we are fucked. And as I say, that was probably three years ago he was on that voyage looking for these methane seeps bubbling out of the Arctic Ocean. I just, and, I, and was it just last week, talking about how now all these freshwater lakes, you know, in the, in the permafrost are turning into boiling cauldrons of methane as the methane bomb explodes all over the top of this planet with the IPCC, the UN Climate Agency, completely ignoring the entire subject 
of methane in all of their dire predictions and their unadulterated horseshit uh, two degree, much less one and a half degree targets, just no mention of methane. You understand this, guys? Uh, so, Jason Box knew damn well what he is talking about, and uh, but you better believe that that quote, being honest about the state of this planet, came back to bit him, to bite him in the ass uh, as a leading climatologist who has spent many years studying the Arctic at the Bird Polar and Climate Research Center at Ohio State, Box knew that his breezy scientific detachment described one of, just one of the nightmare climate scenarios, a feedback loop where warming seas release methane that causes warming that releases more methane that causes more warming, on and on until the planet is incompatible with human life. Mm -hmm. And he knew there were other methane releases occurring in the Arctic. Alright, so anyway, this came out and bit him in the ass. So after after catching all kinds of shit, uh, and, and I'm and I'm just flying through this. It would take me over an hour to read this article. This is why you need to go on and read this. Uh, what did he? I I love it. Uh, okay. This is what he sounded like in 2015 when the interview began before he, before he started uh, winding up. Uh, when, when asked about this tweet, he responds briefly, uh, you know, say early in the relationship with, the report, with this reporter, quote, I think most scientists must be bur burying overt recognition of the awful truths of climate change in a protective layer of denial, not the same kind of denial coming from conservatives, of course. I am still amazed how few climatologists have taken an advocacy message to the streets demonstrating for some policy action. And this, of course, was a few months before that unadulterated uh, policy action of the Paris Climate Talks. Let me go find my bullshit button. I can't say uh, the words Paris Climate Agreement without reaching for my bullshit detector button. Uh, anyway, just moving, moving on, uh, <laughs> this, this reporter was having all kinds of fun with this, uh, when they were discussing the issue of, uh, uh, okay, what, what, what if we are fucked? Uh, gloom is the one subject he does not want, want to discuss. Crawling under a rock is not an option. So, becoming overcome with PTSD-like symptoms is useless. There you go. Uh, yeah, right, but as the, as the story wears on, uh, he, he starts backtracking on this. Uh, anyway, as I say, well here, okay, so here is just the background this is one paragraph. So, this is essentially what this Esquire writer, I've already forgotten the, this fellow's name, this is what he was presenting to all of these, for Jason Box and a bunch of other climatologists uh, who just understand that we're fucked. So, uh, take it away, Esquire magazine, for anybody who does not understand what's going on on this planet. <clears throat> For more than 30 years, 
climate scientists have been living a surreal existence. A vast and ever-growing body of research, again over a year ago, shows that warming is tracking the rise of greenhouse gases exactly as their models predicted. The physical evidence becomes more dramatic every year. Forests retreating, animals moving north, glaciers melting, wildfire seasons getting longer, higher rates of droughts, floods, and storms. Yes, yeah, go, go to Miami today. Five times as many in the 2000s as in the 1970s. In the blunt words of the 2014 National Climate Assessment conducted by 300 of America's most distinguished experts at the request of the U.S. government, human-induced climate change is real and the change is already affecting agriculture, water, human health, energy, transportation, forest, and ecosystems. But that is not even the worst of it. Arctic air temperatures are increasing at twice the rate of the rest of the world. Uh, and evidence little more than a year old, meaning uh, 2014 evidence, uh, suggest that the West Antarctic ice sheet is doomed, which will add between 20 and 25 feet to ocean levels. <clears throat> the 100 million people in Bangladesh will need another place to live, not to mention the people in Miami, Florida. <clears throat> and globally, cities will be forced to, re to relocate, a task complicated by economic crisis and famine with continental interiors drying out. <clears throat> the chief scientist at the U.S. State Department back in 2009 predicted a billion people will suffer famine within 20 or 30 years. Uh, <clears throat> and yet these uh, the scientists themselves, perhaps the cruelest blow of all, these climatologists themselves, just, just you know, talk, kill the messenger, have been the targets of an unrelenting and well-organized attack that includes death threats, summons from a hostile Congress, attempts to get them fired, legal harassment, <clears throat> and intrusive discovery demands so severe that they had to start their own legal defense fund, all amplified by a relentless propaganda campaign nakedly financed by the fossil fuel companies. So, you know, these climatologists doing their job, this is called murder the messenger. You know, everyone from uh, Donald Trump to the fucking Koch brothers to these goddamn clueless moron conspiracy wackos, uh, every form uh, of these climate deniers. And, and, and you know, what the fuck? And, you know, I mean, I just get a tiny little taste of it uh, from these trolls. Okay, so among climate activists, Gloom is building. Uh, so this is Jim Driscoll, I guess, from the National Institute for Peer Support. <laughs> Just finished a study of a group of longtime climate activists who most frequently, whose who's most frequently reported feeling was sadness, followed by fear, followed by anger. There you go. Sadness fear, and anger. This, as I've mentioned, uh, this, this woman before, uh, Dr. Lisa Van Soostrein, um, is actually a psychiatrist, calls what these climatologists and anybody else with a brain, any 
uh, depressed, collapsed, and Terry, and she labels this pre-traumatic stress. Pre-traumatic. Quote, so many of us are exhibiting all the signs and symptoms of post-traumatic disorder. The anger, the panic, the obsessive, intrusive thoughts. Um, here is leading climate activist Gillian Caldwell went public with her quote climate trauma as she uh, as she called it quitting the group she helped build and posting an article called 16 tips for avoiding climate burnout I need to uh, I need to go read that article in which she suggests compartmentalization Yes, uh, quote, it is very hard to switch from the riveting force of apocalyptic predictions at work and then to go home where problems are petty by comparison. Yeah, you know, so the, the, these climatologists, they spend eight hours a day uh, predicting the apocalyptic collapse of humanity and a planet and then they go home and I don't know, you, you know, their, their kids or, 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 or what, Some, one of their fucking uh, TV comedies has been canceled or something. You, you know, it's, it's, and I understand exactly what they're talking about. When, when you spend your days down inside this rabbit hole and the climate rabbit hole is only one of many that, that I'm down in, uh, you know, what the fuck? And, and then you go back home. You, you, lead, you climb out of this rabbit hole and, and, and you try to communicate with, with your friends, your family members, and it, it, with, with these clueless fucking morons, and, and including the person you're married to. It's just, uh, uh, it's called being a depressed collapsitarian. Okay, Good. getting back to the article. Most of the dozens of scientists and activists I spoke to date the rise of their melancholy mood to the failure of the 2009 climate conference uh, and the shift from hope of prevention to plans for adaptation. Uh, uh, one of the stories that I was going to have in my climate meltdown roundup rant, which I won't get to this week, was Leonardo DiCaprio, you know, discussing up uh, there saving the planet, talking with uh, Barack Obama about climate change and Leonardo DiCaprio's plans for his future. He is going to Mars, is what he told Farrakh that he's taking the first spaceship off of planet Earth to Mars is uh, how he is adapting. Yes, uh, here is Bill McKibben's birth, Earth, spelled E-A-A-R-T-H, is a manual for survival on an Earth so different he does not think we should even spell Earth the same. James Lovelock delivers the same message in his A Rough Ride to the Future. In Australia, author Clive Hamilton writes articles and books with titles like Requiem for a Species. In a recent issue of The New Yorker, the melancholy Jonathan Franzen argues that since Earth now, quote, resembles a patient whose terminal cancer we can choose to treat either with disfiguring aggression or with palliation and sympathy, close quote, we should just stop trying to avoid the inevitable and spend our money on new nature preserves where animals can go extinct a little more slowly. Mm -hmm. And this, don't forget, 
the number one depressed collapsitarian, no article on depressed collapsitarians is complete without our old buddy Guy McPherson. At the darkest end of the spectrum of depressed collapsitarian uh, environmentalists are groups like Deep Green Resistance, which openly advocates sabotage to the industrial infrastructure and the thousands of people who visit the website and attend speeches of Guy McPherson, a biology professor, former biology professor from University of Arizona who has concluded that renewable energy at this point will do no good. So he left his job uh, and is preparing for abrupt climate change. Quoting Guy in Esquire magazine, Civilization is a heat engine. There is now no escaping the trap we have landed ourselves into. There you go, and I've mentioned this guy. I need to do more on this fellow, uh, Paul Kingsnorth. Paul Kingsnorth, a longtime climate activist and novelist who has abandoned all hope after Copenhagen, just a, a completely abandoned uh, hope. And retreating to the woods of Western Ireland, he helped launch a group called Dark Mountain with a stirring, gloomy manifesto calling for, quote, a network of writers, artists, and thinkers who have stopped believing the stories our civilization tells itself. Close quote. Among those stories we keep telling ourselves, progress, growth, and the superiority of humans over every other species we, uh, we share the planet. This is quoting uh, Paul Kingsnorth. I need to uh, do a, a rant about him. Quote, you have to be careful about hope. Hope. If that hope is based on an unrealistic foundation, it just crumbles and then you end up with people who are despairing. Yep, there you go. Uh, quote, continuing to quote Kings North, quote, We all love the fruits, the fruits of what we're given, our cars and computers and iPhones. What politician is going to try to sell the people a future where they cannot update their iPhones forever. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, this, this uh, journalist had to fly to Europe to interview this guy. Does he think it would be wrong to take a transatlantic airplane flight to interview a climate scientist? Quote, you have to answer that question yourself. Anyway, guys, this goes uh, on and on, this excellent, excellent story. I mean, he goes right on, I mean, just admitting climatologists after, after climatologists here, of course. Uh, here is some guy named Schmidt, I think I've, I've mentioned this, um, talking about a, even though he claims we're not fucked. On one hand, uh, this guy is, he's not quite ready to agree with Jason Box that we were fucked, but he does say, um, he doesn't see a lot of political action. Oh yeah, Schmidt says almost casually, the business as usual world that we project is really a totally different planet. <clears throat> there is going to be huge 
dislocations if that comes about. These glaciers are going to melt. They're all going to melt, he says. But my reaction to Jason Box's comments is, what is the point of saying that? That we're fucked. It doesn't help anybody. Uh, yeah, as I, you know, guys, I see I'm already hitting, this, this really is, I, I think you get the point. Uh, oh, here's someone from the University of Texas right there in Austin, uh, Camille Parmesan has claimed she has now become, quote, professionally depressed and she is just leaving the United States, she's leaving Austin, Texas, heading to England. Yes, uh, good for you. And she is not optimistic. Do I think it is likely that the nations of the world will take sufficient action to stabilize climate in the next 50 years? No, I don't think that is likely. Uh, yep, and of course, no, uh, no one has experienced more host hostility more vividly than Michael Mann of the hockey stick fame. Uh, you know, claiming uh, if, if you if you are honest about the situation, you will be quote shot, quartered, and fed to the pigs along with your whole damn family. Uh, talking about the the trolls. Uh, quote, in this chess match that's being played out by very powerful figures, you feel anger, befuddlement, disillusionment, disgust. Uh, guys, let's, uh, let's, I mean, I think she gets back, good lord, this is like a, a whole, a, a whole book. Uh, this, this article, could, and I, I have read it. Let's get down if I can ever find the bottom. Good God, I, I'm barely starting this article. Uh, let's see. Yeah, see, they, well, anyway, they end up with, with, with Box. Uh... I guess he is talking about buying land in Greenland. Yes, he is looking for property in Greenland, quote, as a possible bug out scenario. So we have Jason Box moving to Greenland and Leonardo DiCaprio moving to Mars. But I'm going to wrap up this uh, depressed, collapsitarian rant, and me and the little dog are going to hit the streets of Seattle, Washington for a few hours before Seattle starts looking like Miami, Florida. But as I say, I'm going to put the link on here. If you read one article about the state of the planet and depressed collapsitarians, read this one. And you will know we are so fucked. Bye, guys. This little dog. This is the little dog on the motel bed. Are you ready? Bye, guys.